on the FHS pontoon boat and learn my proven methods for catching more and bigger trout up close and hands on. see been tough here today no doubt about it that was right at about 20 feet man what a strike trigger spoon junior baby man it's a good spoon it's going right at 1.8 when that fish hit Come to life now. Oh, nice cow. Oh, oh, oh. daddy, look at that big rainbow. Right there, Trigger Spoon Jr. Woo! Woo! Oh, that's a stud right there. What a beauty. Man, tough bite out here today, but that Trigger Spoon Junior is getting it done, man. That is a nice fish right there. Nice Elmanor rainbow. Beautiful. Husky. Probably, I don't know, 20, 21 inches long. Just a beautiful fish. That guy is nice and clean. He's going to look great in the... Uh, in the smoker he's got one little copepod there one there but uh that's just a dandy fish couldn't lay off that orange trigger spoon junior 1.8 20 feet deep bam right there what a fish do you want results next time you go trout fishing get yourself a set of trigger spoons and put a limit on the stringer they flat out produce Howdy folks, Kel Kellogg here. Well, as you can see from the opening, I just got back from Lake Elmanor. I had productive fishing. I caught some really nice rainbows, but it wasn't an easy bite. At least it wasn't an easy bite for me. And I had to tweak my approach to get hit. So today I thought I'd talk a little bit about how you can tweak your approach to get the most out of any trout bite. And when I talk about tweaking your approach, I don't mean making big kind of global changes in your presentation. Sometimes it's very subtle changes. So let me just illustrate this by going through the bite that I experienced up at Lake Elmanor and talk a little bit about the changes I made and the changes I wanted to make to, to make the bite all that much better. So, you know, I started out with a base of knowledge. What do the fish feed on at Lake Elmanor this time of the year? Well, it's a pond smelt bite. And uh, you know, my money lures up there a lot of times are trolling flies. So I started out with smelt pattern trolling flies, just like that fly right there. First 90 minutes on the water, I saw some fish swirl. I marked some fish on my sonar unit, but I didn't get any hits at all. So I started playing a little bit, you know, playing around a little bit with color. And uh, ultimately, I put on an orange fly, just like this one here. And I was running it, you know, 10, 12 feet deep. And wham, I hooked up, I got a fish, I'm on the board. I got a fish probably 19 inches long, had a few copepods on it, but a, a very solid fish and a good start to the day. Well, naturally I kept trolling this fly, I kept you know varying the depth, and I noticed that I was getting short strikes. You know, around noon I'd gotten probably six you know short strikes where I'd see the rod tail, wham but the fish wouldn't hook up. And that just told me that the fish were coming in, they were grabbing the tail of, of the fly, and they just weren't getting a hook in their mouth. So, you know, I was kind of racking my mind, what did I know? Well, I knew the fish were willing to hit. I knew they were willing to hit an orange, you know, an orange lure. So I left the orange fly on because I'd caught a fish on it, and I started experimenting with my second rod. And uh, the first lure I put on 
was an orange and a chrome Trigger Spoon Jr. And you saw me catch that fish on it in the opening of this video. Um, unfortunately, you know, I trolled this for maybe 10 minutes and I hooked that fish and it was awesome. And then the wind came up and it got stronger and stronger and it kind of drove me off the water. But, uh, you know, as I, as I went to the ramp, I thought to myself, well, I'm gonna fish tomorrow. I've kind of got this bite figured out. I, I, I you know, made, made a modification. I was getting those, those short strikes. I went with a more compact lure in the same basic color, you know, scheme, and uh, I picked up that fish within 10 minutes or so. So, you know, I'm thinking I cracked the case. Now, when I got back to camp that evening, a couple things happened. One thing was good, one thing was bad. Um, I cleaned the trout I'd gotten, and they were full of pond smelt, but they weren't full of the usual, you know, two to three inch pond smelt that I typically see at Elmanor. Instead, and I'll, I'll put up a little video of them, they were full of little tiny pinhead pond smelt. And, uh, but no problem for me, I, I had the perfect, you know, I had the perfect lure for that situation. So I rigged up with a couple different things for the next morning. I rigged up with a tiny, a tiny little Arctic Fox tube fly. That fly is about an inch long and was, you know, gonna be a perfect match for the pond smelt that those Elmanor rainbows were feeding on. And on my second rod, rather than running an orange and chrome Trigger Spoon Junior, I was gonna run a chrome on chrome Trigger Spoon Junior. I was gonna run everything at 1.6 to 1.8 miles an hour. And uh, I am very confident that had I fished the next day, I would have put a whooping on those trout. Now, I didn't fish the next day. Why? Well, that evening I got camp set up and I decided, that, you know, we ate dinner. I decided to take Lucy for a walk. And I thought to myself, man, it's pretty windy. And uh, sure enough, I was camped there at Elmanor West and I made my way down to the boat ramp and it was pretty windy. There were big rollers coming in, white caps, stuff like that. And I thought to myself, well, no problem. It's gonna die down overnight. So I cruise back to camp and I'm kind of sitting there, I'm heating up some coffee and I get a text from Wes Ward and he asked me, is it really windy up there? The forecast is for wind. Now, before I left home, I checked the forecast. There wasn't any wind in the forecast. Well, sure enough, it's windy, and I checked my, my wind app on my phone. Well, the next morning, it was supposed to be blowing anywhere from 10 to 14 miles an hour, which is not a, a safe level of wind to go kayaking at Lake Elmanor. So long story short, I didn't get to try the lures I wanted to try. Um, I ended up heading home. I went up to Sugar Pine Reservoir, and I, I caught, uh, I think I caught 18 rainbows the next day. But the point of this is, is that when I hit the water and my initial offerings weren't working, I started thinking about what I was seeing, kind of thinking about what I was doing. I started experimenting, you know, based on, on the success, based on the experiences I'd had on past trips. And then I started trying to modify that approach even more. And when I saw those small ponds smelt in the stomachs of those rainbows I cleaned, I was very confident that if I downsized my lures and I matched that hatch and I went out there and I worked that, you know, 10 to 15 foot depth range, I would have smoked those trout. I'm very confident um, I would have done much better the next day. Don't know if it would have been a wide open bite, but I expect I would have doubled or tripled what I caught on day one. So anyway, just remember, when you're out on the water, always think about modifying your approach to maximize the results. And that, that often doesn't mean, you know, doing a 180 degree change. It's little, small changes a lot of times that make big results. So if you're an experienced guy, if you're a beginner, doesn't matter. Just remember, when you get out on the water, if something isn't working, start taking those incremental approaches. Start slowing down start downsizing and then when you catch a fish or when you see some forage in the water you know maybe you want to change your approach even more to really kind of quote unquote match the hatch match the temperament of the fish match what the fish are feeding on and uh, you're going to enjoy consistent success and you're going to catch some really big fish throughout the year mm -hmm.